Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. A lot of really crazy news, so bear with me. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. MasterCard, Visa, digital auction company eBay, and payments firm Stripe have all pulled out of the Libra Association. The Financial Times reported on Friday that eBay and Stripe dropped out of the Libra cryptocurrency project citing political pressure, which I'll get to in one second. Following PayPal, which pulled its own support for the project earlier this week, a MasterCard spokesperson confirmed to Coindesk that the company will be withdrawing as well. In a statement, the MasterCard spokesperson said, and I do quote, MasterCard has decided it will not become a member of the Libra Association at this time. We remain focused on our strategy and our own significant efforts to enable financial inclusion around the world. That's a lie. We believe there are potential benefits in such initiatives and will continue to monitor the Libra effort, end quote. Likewise, a Visa spokesperson told Coindesk, Visa has decided not to join the Libra Association at this time. We will continue to evaluate and our ultimate decision will be determined by a number of factors, including the association's ability to fully satisfy all re requisite Regulatory expectations. Visa con Visa's continued interest in Libra stems from our belief that well-regulated blockchain base. Who thinks of these sentences? Like the way that they're formulated together is always so uh, like political. It's you know deep in your heart that they don't mean any of these things. It's more like if if there was no problem at, the, at all against Libra and or Facebook, they'd be going full steam ahead because it's money. The, these companies are well known for the last 50, 60, 70 years to try and get as much money out of people as possible. Uh, so the fact that they're like, as long as it's regulated and people are safe, then we're fine with it. It's more so, and it went, once again, I'll get to that in one second, something happened. An eBay spokesperson told the Financial Times that while the company respects the Libra Association's vision, it was instead choosing to focus on releasing a managed payments experience for its customers and then Stripe spoke and then blah, 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 so and so and so. Apparently what happened about a day or two ago that I think a lot of people ended up missing, there was apparently a, what I read and what it seemed like to me is that a lot of these companies were threatened that if you continue to go along with this, we're going to bring you down the same exact way that we're trying to bring Facebook and Libra down. What's fascinating is that during the course of this, the, the, the last half of the week, let's say from Wednesday on, was quite interesting. There were a lot of breakdowns. There were a lot of very good news that happened and almost immediately after a lot of these things were uh, not retracted, but something happened on Tuesday or Wednesday around the same exact time. Remember when we had the, uh, the regulatory clarity for Ethereum? Some switch was flipped and I'm not exactly sure when, why, or how it happened, but everyone seems to be... Um, uh, regulations seem to be at the beginning of being in full force, if that makes any sense, within many different parts of the world. Apparently, once again, from the information that I gathered from the podcast and the discussions and the other stuff that, that's happening on the internet, is that apparently someone told Facebook, like, really, you know how, like, before everyone was like, stop it, come on, you guys got to stop. Apparently someone went to them and was like, stop. You're stopping this entire thing. And this happened after we had the news that Libra apparently was trying to launch first within India, which is even crazier because of the entire semi-ban that India has had on cryptocurrencies. And then apparently the idea that Facebook could launch... In, so if, if they're having a problem with Libra launching in North America and this in place and then so and so and so, they're like, okay, we'll just choose India, we'll choose South America, we'll choose parts of Africa, we'll choose parts of so and so and so, and they still end up getting around a over a good 1.5, 2 point something billion people onto their project, it's still a success. A lot of the companies or countries thought, as long as we can get them not to launch in our country, they have no chance. The problem is, is that other countries who are not doing well economically, they go, uh, they raise their hands and they go, uh, we want the money, please come over here. So I think it was the fear that they had released information that they had planned on or were planning on or probably going to, launch within India, I think by the, what was it? They had the, they were testing and stuff like that, but by the end of this year, something significant would happen. So this is what I think is lighting the fire under many countries. So once again, to reiterate, apparently there was some type of discussion that went on. It was a one-sided discussion from what I heard, and it pretty much said, you can't do this. And then the very next day, keeping in mind also, once again, it's MasterCard, Visa, eBay, Stripe, 
uh, and I think PayPal has also pulled out of it as well. These were the major names for this entire thing, and it pre pretty much came down to the fact that the speculation had been if MasterCard and Visa, the largest um, debt companies in the world, had integrated Libra, were using Libra, if you were able to pay in Libra, it kind of replaces the US dollar, especially if they end up having Libra simply flowing through their systems and all the actual uh, transaction fees for Libra simply went to Visa and or MasterCard as validators on the network. Who needs the US dollar when you're simply using Libra? On top of that as well, if eBay had integrated Libra and you got a discount, you got a 5% discount for using Libra. Why would you want to pay in, in the US dollar? Same exact thing with Stripe. And also PayPal as well was, was probably one of the more uh, not striking blows, but it was a very, also a, another situation where if PayPal integrated Libra and you got a discount for using Libra, or if you being paid in Libra, you got a discount of the fees for transferring Libra were lower than transferring the US dollar onto PayPal. Once again, who would use it? So this is where I, I wonder, 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 wonder what the discussion was. Uh, how much fear there was, uh, or rather who was throwing the most uh, muscle around the table, but apparently it worked. Um, all of that aside, from listening the last day or two about this topic, as everyone has, uh, or rather the last couple of hours, if you will, about this discussion, people are saying that apparently, I mean, I, I assume we'll get more news about this as the week, upcoming week comes on. Uh, apparently, Facebook is undeterred. There's still other companies who are okay with what's going on. They don't care about the actual uh, backlash. I almost said lash back. Backlash. And as always, there are really other companies who are also like, well, fine. They won't do it. Let's go to the helm. So this is going to be a continued discussion, um, obviously. But, yeah. Um, people were asking. Um, I guess I'll, 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 I'll address it now. People were asking. It, it wasn't a lot of people. Maybe about four, five people out of the entire comment section were asking why I kept on focusing on Libra. And it was more like a, I'm not focusing on Libra. It's more like for a very long time, especially if you've been into finance, anything that has to do with the cryptocurrency space, especially it was the idea that eventually sometime in the future, we would have something that would replace the US dollar. And it was unlikely to all of us that Facebook would be the unlikely candidate to be able to replace the US dollar. That was in no one's head. And the fact that there's so much backlash against this and also the other stuff that's been happening like the last day or two within the cryptocurrency space or against heavily the cryptocurrency space, it looks like we've like moved on to a brand new phase of uh, indirectly trying to shut down the cryptocurrency space as we currently have it right now. There's been far too much uh, pushback against this, especially also the other news that we had before that Facebook a couple of weeks ago told us that they at some point... Um, planned on exclusively. They said they wanted to exclusively use Bitcoin for their payment network. They said it was too slow, so they decided to create Libra. And the speculation was that if they had been obsessed with Facebook uh, with Bitcoin for you know quite a long amount of time, that at some point on their open source Calibra wallet, they would have simply said, "Okay, now we're also supporting Bitcoin." That then gives Bitcoin a reach to around 2.4 billion people. And since governments are trying to shut all of that down, it's it's an in, it's, it's an indirect attack towards us and also the cryptocurrency space. But more also, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's quite interesting to just see the news of how this is all developing. Like, there's a company who's trying to become the largest bank in the entire world and just seeing the actual backlash that they're facing before this has even gotten off the ground. I find it fascinating. It is what it is. Uh, all the major companies have all but pulled out. I think there's still Uber and Lyft as the major companies who are still in there. I think Santander is also a partner. Anyway, doesn't matter. That's the news. Uh, let's move on. It gets more and more ridiculous. Next up, Alipay, the digital payment arm of the Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba, has declared that it will be banning any transactions related to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies on the 10th of October. Alipay reiterated its anti-crypto stance in a Twitter treat Twitter, well, tw Twitter thread, which warned that the company is closely monitoring over-the-counter transactions to identify irregular behavior and ensuring compliance with relevant regulations, they wrote, if any transactions are identified as being related to Bitcoin or other virtual currencies, Alipay immediately stops the relevant payment services, end quote. The following move 
Move follows various reports that Alipay is being used for Bitcoin transactions. For those of you who remember, on the 9th of October, major cryptocurrency exchange Binance confirmed, this is the weird part, on Twitter we spoke about this, that it had begun accepting fiat currencies through online payment services Alipay and mobile messaging and payment app WeChat. Binance CEO Changpeng Cao Clarify that the exchange is not working directly with WeChat or Alipay and users are still able to use them for peer-to-peer transactions. This is exactly what we spoke about. I said it's quite amazing that they were able to, I don't, I don't know exactly how the integration took place, but the fact that people on these platforms were able to buy Bitcoin, that was, I think that day the price of Bitcoin also went up. Tiny bit, but still went up. It was the fact that regardless of what China had said, the ban that had happened, I was surprised that they were able to kind of get this integration uh, going apparently the day after we had this news it's right here this binance now accepting fiat through alipay and wechat uh, that was shut down rapidly by the chinese government and that could also have been why the price of bitcoin a couple of hours later also went down in price that's why i was shocked because for those of you who don't know uh these companies are heavily monitored by their government. And I don't mean like slightly heavily. I mean like everything you do, everything you say, everything you send, everything you buy, even if you go to the dentist, not a joke. It's all monitored completely, ultimately, wholly. So I assume that the news that we were getting a couple of weeks ago, if you were listening to, there was a podcast, I think by Laura Shin, and it was one of the unchained or unconfirmed, she has two different podcasts. So she was discussing with someone the situation in China and how people there are buying, selling, and trading cryptocurrencies. And the woman said, well, mainly people uh, put their money into Tether, however they do it, and then they end up buying cryptocurrencies. A lot of them were trying to use uh, local Bitcoins, which I was squashed very quickly. Uh, and then the people were like, okay, let's just use what we're all using. And it was um, Alipay and WeChat. And this is why I was like, well, Binance is very intelligent because they figured out a way to get to the, the one point something billion people in that country. Nope. Um, anyway, that's kind of the uh, other. Re- is it, the, the, this is why I said uh, the, 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 the cryptocurrency space is very fascinating because you'll get news one day and it'll be completely dismantled. I guess it's kind of a I want to say a three steps forward, two steps back kind of thing. Like we make really good progress over time but there's always a bit of a hindrance people within the country are still buying and selling it regardless of what anyone may be saying but uh i think any uh transaction that binance was trying to have go through apparently has been um decimated i mean maybe that's a bit too strong of a word lightly decimated anyway let's move on Next up, we spoke a bit about this a couple of days ago. Ripple is confirming reports of a major rebrand of its core products. Representatives at the company told the Japanese media outlet Morningstar that the payment messaging system XCurrent and a corporate payment API called XVIA will now simply be rebranded as RippleNet. In addition, its XRP-based cross-border payments platform is no longer called XRapid and will instead use the name On Demand Liquidity. Rather than purchasing XCurrent or XVIA, customers connect to the RippleNet via On Demand or the cloud. And instead of purchasing XRapid, customers use On Demand liquidity. These are not new products, but a rebrand of existing products. There will be little change and no impact on customers. Ripple says it wants to emphasize the company's mission to build a payment network rather than promote a suite of software solutions. Uh, we had news about this about four or five days ago, somewhere around there was the uh the speculation that the ripple company had been rebranding their products apparently it's now been confirmed here's the actual article right here it's written in japanese uh, as it was morningstar japan i don't read japanese but for those of you who can here you go uh and the other significant part is that um what was the other part i still think this is all keep in mind the the timing of the i'm using air quotes the threats against other companies who were trying to join Libra, the, the, crack, the, 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 the continual crackdown of other countries against cryptocurrencies, uh, the confirmation of Ethereum being a commodity and not a security, all the other stuff that we've been getting, the lawsuits from the, oh, <laughs> I have a good one for you, the lawsuits and stuff from the SEC, et cetera, et cetera, over the last two weeks, 
it's it's all too clumped together to kind of be a coincidence. And now also the uh, the Ripple rebranding of their products. I assume myself as they've changed the names of the X and the X this to RippleNet and also the XRP X Rapid to simply on demand liquidity. I'm pretty sure they were told something by some major company. Uh, I'm actually, you know what I'm actually waiting for? I think that they were told by the SEC at some point that their coin could be, could have been considered a security. I think they've moved on from that, but there's still no official clarification. The fact that Ethereum just got one and the news that we had also a couple of days ago, speculation, my part, uh, was that that they were also working on two other coins who they also believe aren't securities. Leads me to believe that very soon, my assumption we should be getting some type of clarity as to exactly what XRP is. And I assume part of this rebranding has to do with if you move your name far away from anything that has an X in it, you'll be uh, in the clear, if you will, from a, from a security uh, standpoint, because th th there's far too much regulation happening as well. What was the other thing? We also just had indications from the, the IRS on how to, uh, how to pay uh, crypto taxes. So something is brewing. I mean, it's the, I was going to say it's the regulation we've been waiting for. Not that we want a regulation, but it's here. Here's the article once again. Uh, let's move on. Here's the, uh, here's the humdinger. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, secured an emergency restraining order. They got an, a restraining order against the Telegram Group and its subsidiary ton issuer for their $1.7 billion token sale. You'll get exactly why I'm talking about this in a moment. The SEC announced on Friday that it filed for and received an emergency action and restraining order halting Telegram from selling or otherwise distributing its Gram token within the United States. The network was supposed to go live on the 31st of October. And now oh, it's, 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 like a, it's like a basket of evil. Telegram sold 2.9 billion gram tokens at discounted prices to 171 initial purchasers around the world. The release said this included more than 1 billion gram tokens sold to U.S. investors. However, the complaint alleges that Telegram did not register its offer or its sale. SEC Division of Enforcement co-director Stephanie Avakian said in a statement that the emergency action is intended to prevent Telegram from flooding the U.S. markets with digital tokens that we allege were unlawfully sold. Telegram failed to provide its investors with information about the Gram token and Telegram's old operations, she said. I'm not going to even read her quote. So, about a good year and a half ago, here's where, here's where I... I back, backing up. Remember I said before, I said, I have a very strange feeling. That, in my opinion, companies who are going to launch are going to have a very hard time in the future. I said this in 2018. When we started seeing cryptocurrency exchanges disappear, when we started seeing cryptocurrency price metrics websites disappearing, when the, um, the Financial Action Task Force came forward and said that this has to be done and every cryptocurrency exchange was like, sure. And the other cryptocurrency exchanges who didn't simply uh, answer them disappeared we don't talk there's a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges who we no longer hear about the telegram ico happened i believe i believe i believe in 2017 if not sometime beginning 2018 the, the, the exact time doesn't really matter we had news last summer that their issuance or release of their tokens would happen sometime i believe this year because of the whatever making it the securing of the network the whatever they were doing. The point was, was that by the end of this month, by October 31st, they had to sell their tokens or release their tokens or the tokens had to be so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so, simply because of, there was a clause in the contract with the people from Telegram and Ton that said if they have not done so by Halloween, that they, I believe, have to refund all of their customers their money. The interesting part was that, bear with me, I, myself, and you out there, we've had this information, all of us have had this information since last year. Filing an emergency restraining order against Telegram, what is that? 15? No, no, no. 19 days? 
before they're going to launch their token lets me know, this is myself, that there's an outrageous amount of corruption happening behind the scenes. If we collectively, me, you, I, us, we, they, have had this information since last year, one can only assume that the SEC also probably had this information. If, if, if us common people had this information, they had it. Why would the SEC, knowing that a company had raised $1.7 billion through their ICO for their app with a new cryptocurrency and a new blockchain, why would they wait 19 days before to issue a restraining order as opposed to doing it last year when they could have stopped them and told the company, hey, you're doing something wrong, come to us, we'll smooth all of this out. This is coordinated. One, I don't own any ton. I don't, I don't even use Telegram. It's more of a, you knew that they were going to do this. The amount of coordination behind all of this is making me a bit frustrated if you can't hear it in my voice. The same, and I, and I assume at some point that, uh, com that no company would go unscathed, and that's exactly what's happening. We were just talking about, what's the other coin? Kin, from, from the Kick messaging app. They're going after every single company who could potentially release a currency that is deemed any type of a threat to the US dollar. The, 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 the TUN token, the KIN token, Libra, any, all of these coins are meant to be a type of an alternative to the US dollar and can be used at will through these apps. How much do you want to bet? Any other messaging app, I, and I, I think there's two more, and I'm sure they're shaking in their boots, who may have th had an ICO or thought about having an ICO to release their own cryptocurrency token, blah, 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 so and so and so on their network to be able to have people to use them. They've all, all those, all those dreams are gone. I would bet you, once all that news is gone, all these ICO dramas completely gone, that by next year, some other major app some other major thing that we're all using that we're just not even thinking of is going to announce that they're going to have their own cryptocurrency. I, I wouldn't even be shocked. Bear with me. I wouldn't even be shocked if it's some type of major. I wouldn't be. Remember the news that we had from Apple a couple of days ago? Uh, we believe that only governments should be issuing money. How surprised would any of you be by next year? After all, these companies have been blown away as Apple is the largest tech company in the world, I believe, if not maybe just the U.S., that they would release their own coin and that sometime this next year that we got information that this year they were already submitting documents to the SEC to make sure that they were registered and compliant. I would have no ounce of surprise in my body. Same exact thing with Amazon. Because the news that we had before, once again, was that every single major company was apparently creating or thinking of creating, air quotes, their own cryptocurrency, own crypto coin in some sort of manner. How unsurprised would you be if all the other major companies who pretty much rule the world, all the fangs, uh, that is, once again, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Netflix, or creating their type of coin. Anyway, uh, I've, I, I saw this yesterday, like last night, and, I, and nothing usually shocks me. We've had this information that they were going to launch since last year on Halloween. We knew this was going to happen. The emergency restraining order, and I'm not surprised at all that, 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 that the people from, from Telegram didn't reply for, for a response. I'm sure they're just screaming. I'm sure they're all completely red in the face and so angry right now because they waited before this was going to launch. And the, and the even crazier part, like I said, well, I don't think it's somewhere around here. Ba -ba 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 -ba, somewhere, maybe, maybe, maybe. The entire point is, from what we read before is that they're going to have to give back all that money to everyone who invested in their project. Like it's not, it's clearly, it's clearly not going to launch on Halloween this year. Um, if you can make sure to stay in a decentralized cryptocurrency space as much as possible. When people ask, and we're asking before, and I think more people are getting it, why I continue to put my support behind Bitcoin, I have other altcoins. That, that, that won't change. I mean, until we have like a really crazy price rise, then a lot of my altcoins will be sold off. It's impossible to raid Bitcoin's office. It's impossible to send Bitcoin a letter. We don't like what you're doing. 
It's impossible to send Bitcoin on the blockchain an emergency restraining order. The more that days go by, the more I understand years ago what people were talking about as far as the the strength and stability of Bitcoin. It's not only just the the robustness of the network and how strong it is and the amount of miners and so and so and so. That's another discussion. It's the fact that nothing like this can happen. There were so many, think of all the other ICOs that we had, all the other promising things, the things that we thought we were going to get. I knew for a fact in my mind, by the end of this year, I would be downloading Telegram or some other website and using their new token or whatever the case might be. However, that's not going to happen. And this only, not only does it strengthen Bitcoin in any other decentralized coins case, but it makes me only want to buy more of them. I'll be completely honest with you because if you think that these fights are over, that they're only going to start going after ICOs and IEOs and STOs, they have already tried to find ways, and other countries are doing it as well, to actively attack Bitcoin and in that same lump, trying to attack Ether, Litecoin, XRP, any other coin that may be properly decentralized out there. Make sure to focus on coins because when all of these other ICO coins have been washed away by the flood and the sun looks bright outside, they're going to try and come for decentralized coins. They won't be able to in the same exact way. They're definitely going to have some type of scare tactics, but pay attention and make sure if you can, uh, doing your own research as always, to focus on decentralized coins. And uh, the other really annoying part about this website is that they post uh, their trophies on their website. It says SEC halts alleged 1.7 billion unregistered digital token offering. They, they make it almost seem like as if like the people from Telegram were trying to like harm, harm people. Like they were, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating the, the, the usage of words that we see. Anyway, I'm spending too much time. I could actually go on for another hour just ranting, but I think I would tire myself out. The room's also very hot today. Anyway, Let's move on. And I guess even on this topic right here, uh, not going to even read through it. It's more of a, a public service announcement. It says, beware of crypto scammers. 1,500 scammers impersonate Binance on LinkedIn. Uh, the last couple of weeks, th this was more of a topic in 2017 in th the beginning of 2018. People were always asking me, um, was I on this platform? Was I on this? Was I on that? If you've been here for a while, you already know the deal. Um, I am only... I only post on YouTube and I post my videos on uh, Facebook. I almost said book face again on Facebook and on Twitter. That's it. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Telegram. I'm not on kick. I'm not on Mick. I'm not on Nick. I'm not, I'm not on any other type of thing except that people for some reason, I mean, they're scamming money to be made. People keep impersonating me are saying that they are me. If anyone ever messages you, or you message them or someone says that they are me and that they want money from you in exchange for information, just to let you know, that's not me. Don't send them money. Because in 2018, some people definitely wrote in the comment section that someone was pretending to be me. They sent them a couple of Ether or, or, or some Satoshis and they were like, they didn't get it back from me. And I was like, well, you didn't get it back from me because it wasn't me. So uh, spread the word if need be. It's not me. I'm, I'm just on here kind of finish things off um if you will bitcoin's price the other day tried to hit 8800 i think it went to seven eight thousand seven hundred and ninety two or something like that uh it's gone back down the interesting part is that bitcoin's price the last week or two has been experiencing a large amount of volatility which is actually great i know if you're new to the cryptocurrency space it may seem a bit of a um the word's not heartbreaker. What's the word? You get palpitations. Your heart beats very fast. If you, if you see this happening, the price going up and down, this is actually very healthy. When, whenever Bitcoin is, is trending very slowly and it takes about four or five months for any type of movement, it creates a very annoying market. However, when Bitcoin's price is fluctuating up and down, it means that people around the world are actively in the market. They're trading. They're swinging it as much as possible. And usually historically when we see in the prices this happening bitcoin usually does at some point uh very well as prices are long story short volatility uh does the market good 
if you kind of want to say that. So I've been very happy to see that prices have actually been moving up and down. It means that people are interested once again in the market. Because since June, till I think the end of September, uh, it took about a good week for Bitcoin to move anywhere. The fact that it's happening daily is very nice to see. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Bodie McBoatface. Yes to crypto, Miller hits chest every day, and Kyle skips leg day, minting coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, there we go, Nick Mangialavori, crypto and beer shipmate, Paxis, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Rich the Third, Nick Kanaya, Setsuna, Damian, Nicholas, Run Earth, One Piece, One Love, Cryptopolis, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Strange Radio Central, Mechanic, Mill Weezy, Adobo, Bankroll Network, Crypto Joe, 242 to the World, Wise Night Owl, Jared Schneider, Triple M and J, Woody and Daisy, Brady Neals, Master Ventures in Thailand, Mohan Maroney, Adam Grasick, Todd Mullis, Professor Wally from Gunabat the University. Thank you all very, very much for your support. The moment we have a sea of red and green in the market. Bitcoin is around 8,300. Nothing hyper significant to talk about in the market right now. Even after the the uh, the Alipay WeChat news, Binance Coin has not faltered, has not gone down. Um, let's see by the end of the weekend exactly where the prices end up going. Uh, we've only had, I mean, the regulation news has kind of... People think that it's, it's helped and also put a dent in the, in the market as far as... It does well for very rich investors who know exactly how much they're going to be taxed and how to get taxed and taxed and taxed and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but for other people, it's it's been not a hindrance. It's just more of like a, uh, it feels like they're doing too much at once. They they took two years to give regulation, regulatory, anything. And now it's like a bombardment of it almost every single day. This is going to be very fascinating to see how this un unravels. I would expect if Facebook plays good, and this also, the timing is also very weird as well. Remember we had news yesterday that apparently um, Zuckerberg is supposed to sit in front of, I think, Congress in about 10 days to talk about this. The timing is very interesting how uh, these other companies have also said see ya uh, to Facebook before they're going to be talking before Congress. If, if Facebook, I have a feeling if Facebook plays nice and they get all the regulatory blah, 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 blahs as time goes on, uh, that we would definitely probably see at least one of these companies Going, yeah, yeah, we were actually friends with them the whole time. We were just, we were just waiting. You know, we didn't want to, we didn't want to be as prominent because everyone behind the scenes is expected to be like a major project. They definitely want to make money, so I'm pretty sure. Uh, not only did they probably say they're quitting Libra, but they probably sent them like a, um, I'm, I'm sorry, basket. Uh, hope to see you in 2020 type thing. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are. Wherever you might be, I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching.